Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's uh, Saturday morning here on the east coast of Virginia, and today uh, I want to tackle something um, a, a little bit different. I want something really, really dark and moody. So again, we're going to start by uh, dividing our canvas in two thirds. Um, I, I prepped my canvas with a coat of liquid. This stuff right here. I found that it, it helps uh, with the drying time, uh, at least for the first layer. Uh, I don't know. Again, this is a little bit new to me do, doing this process. So, I mean, it, like I said, it helped with the drying time of the first layer. But I don't know if I would continue to do it. Uh, I'm just going to give it a go for a little bit, give it an actual chance to see what happens. Um, it seems to work so far. It seems to work pretty good. Um, okay, so horizon line. I'm going to go in here. I'm, I want to have some uh, a, a tree line uh, back in here. And in the foreground, we're going to work on some putting some trees in. Nice, real dark colors in here on down here, on down into the foreground. Even bring this over, you know, a ledge, I guess, so to speak, on over in here. And then in, and then in the back, let's use this. Back here, we'll have like a, 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 some highlights for a river, we'll have it cut across, we'll have this go over top to kind of break this, this line. It's gonna be a highlight, it's not gonna be a blue it's gonna be more more of a more of a white ish, and then right along here we'll have some more, um, some more of that water highlight. It's gonna be right back here, um, and then the rest of this is gonna be sky. I want, I want uh, a nice highlight, probably something, something to this nature, um, brightest brightest here. And then, and then uh, gradating down to a little bit darker as we come down in here. And then the rest of this is all going to be cloud. So this this stuff up here is going to be like super super dark. We're going to use uh, oh and and obviously really really dark over here. In here and up in here. Uh, again, highlight. Um, we're going to use, I've got four colors, five including white. I've got uh, Payne's Gray, uh, Alizarin Crimson. This is the, the Bob Ross brand. Uh, I, I normally like to use Winsor Newton, um, but for whatever reason, the Winsor Newton was like two or three times the cost at the time that I purchased this. Uh, and again, this is the uh, 200 200, um, 200 mil version. It looks like it says it on here, but it's it's the same size as the ones in written, which is 200 mil. Um, phthalo, I'm sorry, Prussian blue and sap green. And then of course um, we'll be using titanium white. It's kind of a given. Uh, normally. I, I'm not. Uh, I, I've, I've grown to be not a fan of alizarin crimson. Uh, the drying time on it is ridiculous, so I'm hoping that uh, putting the liquid up on the canvas is going to to help with that. And I'm not going to use a whole lot of it. I just want to use a little bit to kind of tint the tint the blue, and that's why I'm using the Prussian blue. To, it's got a little bit more uh, red in it. Um, it's a warmer blue. Um, I'm hoping. Uh, to not have to use too much alizarin crimson. So let's let's jump in. I am going to use a little bit of a smaller brush today than what I had had been using in the past. Uh, this is probably about a, um, <clears throat> a little over one inch brush. It's from the Evergreen series from uh, from, from Rosemary and Co. I uh, really like rosemary brushes, they're super nice. Uh, but we're going to start with the same 
the same process. I'm going to put, I've got a mixture of um, linseed oil and odorless paint thinner. Um, I'm putting that down on my palette and I am going to mix up uh, some sap green. And I want this to be more of a cool, so and a, and a dab of, of Prussian blue. I've got sap green on one side of my brush, Prussian blue on the other. And I'm just going to jump right in, right along my, right along my skyline. And you know what? I'm going to change that up. I'm going to change that up. That's not how, I don't think that's how I want to do this. And this is fine. Well, I mean, the layout's going to be the same. I'm just a blending color right now. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of, of doing these paintings. If you don't like something, you just take it off. No big deal. None at all. I decided I actually want to start with, uh, with the sky, I think. So I'm going to take some, uh, some Payne's Gray, some Prussian Blue, and I'm going to go up here. And I'm just going to start carefully putting in color. Being ever so precise on how I put it on there. Obviously, I'm joking. Okay, so. I'm probably, this is going to be treated, I believe, I'm going to be treat this more like um, an underpainting. Um, I want to, I want the paint to be in, in layers. I want, I want to feel that depth. And I think as I, as I continue, this is going to feel, at least to me, it's going to feel a little more on the on the uh, on the flat side, um, so in order to get that depth, we're gonna let that let this be on there, and we'll and this will end up we'll push this back, and then we'll put the more contrasting bits on the top of that, and it will hopefully bring it all bring it all together and add some, add some depth to it. Uh, what I want to do is holding up the paper towel a little bit. Uh, before I get too far ahead of myself, I want to remind myself that I want a horizon line right in here. So I'm going to take a little bit of this paint off. Just rinse my brush off. Wipe it off. And I'm not looking for this to be like flat white, canvas white. I mean, it's fine. It's got some, some tint in it. That's not that big of a deal. I really just want to make sure that I maintain highlight right through there. I forgot I would have painted around it to kind of uh, eliminate that worry, but that's fine. And then what this is going to do, what, what, what separating this is on the horizon, as the clouds go further away, um, the, the sky generally goes from, from darkest on top and it comes down and it gets to the lightest, the closer that it gets to the horizon. So what I want to do is I want to be able to maintain this horizon glow. And then I'm bleeding this down here because as the, as the terrain goes away, it's going to start to incorporate the color of the environment. And in this case, the, the environment is being dictated by this color here in the sky. So 
right now I'm just putting this up here just to get some tone up on the canvas. And then we'll be able to come back up and, and manipulate that and, and see what we need, add highlights, add darkness as we as we go along. Just random strokes. Skies are skies are one hundred percent random. One hundred percent. You won't find patterns. It's very hard to find patterns in nature. Um, you can see clusters of things, and it may look to be a pattern, but it's completely not. It is organic. Okay, this looks. Pretty good. This looks pretty good. I'm going to take my 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 two inch brush. If I had some audio troubles here, um, I'm recording off of my my earbuds, my earpods. Um, but it fell off of my recording device, and so I'm hoping hoping that it's picking up on my camera, so I don't lose the audio altogether. Uh, anyway, if there's a jump in the audio, that's that's why. Uh, this is my, my two inch brush. I'm going to use this and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to blend and I'm going to smooth some stuff. Uh, so blend here. I want to soften this and I may have to go and put some white on here to actually help this blend a little bit more. Uh, as of right now, it's not really blending into anything. I'm just really softening what this, what this looks like. And Taking out a lot of these brush strokes. And I'm not too worried about this stuff here. This is all gonna be land. Not that, not that big of a deal. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and put some white up here because I want to blend this. I would like to soften that edge. So as we get into this and we start doing some some other stuff, uh, it'll just kind of take shape. brush it gets too much color on it again I just want I just want some white on here just enough to blend if I pop the brush There again, tone, and and we can come back in later and uh, and do highlights to, to bring things out just softly. Just using the corner, just using the corner of my brush, just making little, just making little circles, just to kind of blend this in. A little bit where I want to soften the edges.
there. I think that'll be good for right now. And like I said, later on, once this sets up, we'll be able to go in and add some additional darks um, right down in, down in here, um, up through in here. We'll just let this set up a little bit, uh, add a little bit of maybe a little bit of pink or red to the sky, um, uh, some, some yellow glow perhaps like through here. Um, perhaps, we'll see, we'll see. I like to keep uh, my paintings fairly spontaneous. Um, see what and see where they go. I don't like to lock myself in too much to uh, to just doing it because you can miss out on some stuff. So on some opportunities. Okay, so let's start with the background. So again, this is where we said we wanted this tree line to be, and I picked up some sap green, some uh, Prussian blue on my brush, and I'm just coming in here and just putting in a nice tree line. Not too worried about the base. The base is going to get um, blended in. Um, but what I would like to do is push some of this color uh, up into the sky a little bit. And you know what? I'm going to change my brush. I'm not liking That brush for that organicness, that's not really necessarily what I'm, I'm looking for. That, and I want to put a little bit more color. I'm going to use, this is, a, this is a natural bristle brush, nothing fancy. I just want to put, wipe some of that off. I want to put some more um, color that can be blended. I don't think I had enough on there. So I'm just putting some more white on there. It's going to mix with the blue and the green that I just put on there. And that's fine. Again, I'm looking for that horizon glow. That's probably good. Okay. So now I'm going to take um, some sap green and some phthalo blue on my brush. And I'm going to try this again. And as you push it up, you can you can see it's starting to mix with that white a little bit. And it adds to that effect of distance. And just turn your brush, get some of that randomness in. Sometimes you're, you're using the flat of the brush and you're just pushing up. And you turn it, get some peaks and valleys. It's going to add a lot of variance uh, to, the, to your project, to your painting. Let it be random. Don't let things look like they have a, a, a repetitive nature to them. And as, as you see things get closer to you, make them bigger. Okay, so there's kind of like the, the, the tree line right there. I'll go back to that. It's my other brush. I'm still working in the distance, so I want a little bit more blue on my brush. Oh, I'm having some audio problems this morning, man. It's, it's crazy. Um, and I'm going to just flatten out. Flatten out this way in the background. And then as I get closer to the to the to the foreground, I'm going to load up on some of the sap green. It's going to mix with the blue. I'm 
I'm going to have that. I'm going to have a highlight back here. I'll I'll take care of that in a minute. And then as we get closer to the to the foreground, I'm going to pick up some sap green and some and some uh, Payne's gray. Change my brush a little bit here. We'll see. It's all about texture, right? Just keep using those same colors. down paint I like using you use swipe to the side using the, the the flat of your brush to the side you get that those thin lines you use your brush up and down like that you, you lay down a little bit more paint so it's up to you to decide what you want to do this helps lay down um, kind of like the, the lay of the land you can see how thing how the land wants to flow And I think different size brushes help you accomplish different things. Okay, so before I get too far ahead, I'm gonna be able to paint over top on top of things. So I wanted to put that that highlight in of the river. So I've got a clean brush. Then just wipe it off. You can use uh, a paper towel to go in and put in some of these details. I, I find uh, there's a little bit more control uh, if you use uh, something like a paper towel. I'm, I'm sorry, something like a, a brush or something like that. You can, you don't have to worry about your, the, wrapping the paper towel too tight or or what have you. Going a few paper towels, which you can do. Okay, so this is gonna be water highlights. <clears throat> we'll break up that line, we'll put some, uh, some foliage in front of it. We'll break up this line here as we get closer to the, uh, to the foreground. So we'll go back to my, my smaller brush, go back into the sap green, phthalo blue. And, and you, these things are going to be um, a little bit darker than, uh, than, than what's behind it because, you know, the stuff that's behind it is farther away, it's more taking up into the uh, into the environment it's going to be you know like we said the further things go into the into the background the uh, the more of the color of the of the environment that it's going to take on so the same way that you put in your, your trees your tree line uh, is the same way you want to break this up I've also got a little bit of a alizarin crimson on my brush. I'm trying to bring that in where I can, just to kind of make sure that it's, everything stays stays warm. And then we'll bring this up here. 
bring this clear up here like this. I'll go in my bigger brush to hit that. Sap green, phthalo blue, touch of Lizzo and crimson. Just texture, right? So I'm just using the bristles of the brush to create that texture, that illusion of detail. Pick these a lot of these tips up from uh, Stuart Davies. His his he has a YouTube channel. Um, a lot of great uh, ad advice for for this technique, and it just it resonates with me, and it makes so much sense. Uh, for the for the style of painting that I do, um, I, I started off being more of a <clears throat> what I thought would be an, an impressionist painter. Um, and then I, I I liked the idea of using tone and value. I spoke to it a lot uh, when I would talk to other people about tone and value and how those things. Um, are so important and then after watching Stuart Davies and, and his tonalist approach to uh, a lot of his paintings uh, it resonated with me and it just made so much sense that uh, I, I took that uh, and, and ran with it because it because it, it just seemed to be like this is what I'm trying to do and um, I'm just going through here using Again, using this, the brush for, for detail, it's a little bit bigger than probably what I would want, but um, it's okay. Um, it just resonated with me that I wanted to, to, to share that. I want to make sure that I give him credit. I'm not trying to say that this is my style or that, that I come up with this style or anything like that. Now, this, that is not the case. Um, and I don't want, if he happens to see this video, first of all, I'd be flattered, um, that he took the time to, to, to see what I was producing. Um, but I wouldn't want him to think that I was trying to take his teachings and claim like, that's my own, because I am 100% not. So, yes, please go check out his, uh, his YouTube channel, um, I'll try to remember to put a, uh, a, a link to it uh, down below in the description. It's looking pretty good, I think. At least for the first pass. Um, I think you guys, based on uh, what I've shown in the past, you know I'd like to... Uh, I like to break things up <clears throat> in passes. I'll let, go and let this dry, and then maybe I'll come back to it and and uh, add add more that kind of thing. What I want to do now is I want to add a little bit of detail uh, here, here um, in the in the grass and foliage. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a paper towel. And in some cases, you can even do this with a brush. Um, just wad it up like this. And down. Remove some paint and you'll, and you'll let the canvas show through behind it. Just be adding some highlights here and there. You want to be careful not to uh, lower the value. When you do this, when you remove the paint, you're actually lowering the value, the overall value of the subject. And you want to make sure that you're not lowering it so much that it's going to be competing with the background. Um, you, want a, you want a direct distinction between 
between the planes in your landscape. You want these things to be able to, to read. And as you're doing this, you're taking paint off, and you can also use that paint elsewhere. You can just transplant it. So just doing these, adding paint, taking paint away where you need it, adding lines, highlights, it's all good. Now another thing that you can do is you take your paper towel and you twist it up. Nice and tight. And I wanna add, I wanna add some Some branches, some 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 trunks. Here and there, and then also, what else you can do is just whip the tar out of the stuff. Just to add a little bit more detail here and there. So I think that we are at a really good place right now. <clears throat> I'm going to try and add a little bit more um, dark up here real quick before uh, before we kind of call it for today. Um, so I'm going to go into my Prussian blue and my uh, Paints gray. And we'll put some some color up here. Prussian blue, paints gray. Color over here. Yeah, I think there's still some sap green on my brush, but you know what? That's okay. That's fine. Use best brushes in the world. Just use whatever you've got, whatever you, however you want to see this take form. Experiment. I've never done this before, but I wanted to give it a try just to kind of see, just to kind of see how it worked out. Um, just get some paint on my on my finger, and I want to put it in. where I want those uh, highlights to be. And then just blend that. I think this gives us a nice softer, softer look kind of builds on those layers that we had talked about before.
gives you it feels like it gives you a little bit more a little more control because you can literally feel what the paint is doing under your fingers which is it's pretty cool Gives you a better idea how you, what you need, what you need where, and how to blend it. And, uh, you know, some people have that control with a brush, and, and, and that's fine. You've been painting for a super long time, and you, you can have that extension of your, of your arm and your, in your brush, and that's, that's absolutely great. That's wonderful. So not everybody can do that. Not everybody has that. I think the important thing to, to take away is uh, you need to do what works, what works for you. Make sure you have a dry brush. You can see some of those paint strokes I put in there. Add a little bit of uh, Paint thinner still in my or odorless paint thinner. Odor, I'm sorry, odorless mineral spirits still on my on my brush. So I'll just put some more color on there. Wipe off my brush. Here, I want to be careful. I know that it's as dark, but I don't want to, again, I don't want to have the foreground fight with that background. So what I can do, I can just take a little bit of this white. And lighten up the sky behind it. And then I can go back on top of that with my sap green, paints gray, Prussian blue, Lizard Crimson. On top of that stuff that I tried to blend a little bit. Some of those tree trunks foliage I put in there. Let's go over top. Let's go over top of them. Kind of, they're not all going to be on on top. They're, they're going to be various stages of, of, of layers of, of growth and. Not everything is just so uniform as. It leaves behind. It leaves behind. And then on the top of that, I've got tree trunks, and that's it. It's like no, it's going to be all over the place, um, especially towards the bases. There's things, 
more shadow and stuff towards the base. Okay, I'm liking this. I'm liking how this, I like the contrast of this. This is really, really nice. Um, I like how this dark here in the foreground is broken by the uh, by the horizon and the and the water in the background, and then it goes back into the dark of the sky and a highlight that's going to come through. It's highlight that's coming through. It's illuminating the water right there. So it's all really working together. I think pretty well. Uh, we're going to let this dry for the rest of this week. Hopefully by next week this is uh, will be. Um, dry enough that we can go in and if I decide to put some highlights in, which I, I really think that I want a little bit of yellow-ish up here, but because there's so much blue, uh, I, I don't want to, I know there's already some green on the canvas or up in here in the sky, but by adding yellow, it's going to be a different kind of green and that, that's not what I'm looking for because I'm also probably going to add some of that yellow down in here into some of these highlights and I wanted to make sure that those uh, uh, are nice and, and bright enough to to work as highlights. So fiddle if you want. I mean, I hope you hope you followed along. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, again, forgive the uh, forgive the the audio mishaps. Um, we'll see if we can get that figured out uh, for next time and. Uh, I'm just going to fiddle with this just for a minute. Uh, I hope you, you like this video. And if you if you do, I hope you, you check out my other videos too. I've got some other videos on here on my channel. Uh, same style. Um, I've also got some, uh, some watercolor and gouache and some acrylic stuff. Uh, some some uh, Magic the Gathering cards that were altered. Um, all that kind of stuff is on here on this channel. So... Subscribe if you haven't. Give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you want to see something specific. If you've got a question about the technique or if you have um, a suggestion, if you want to see something specific, uh, ask. Ask away. Be happy to, happy to help. Happy to, happy to answer whatever questions you've got. There we go. I think I better stop. <laughs> okay. I uh, hope you guys have a great week, and we'll see you again next time.